Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. This is what I'm hanging today. A beautiful metallic sheen silk. This has been rolled up for one year, waiting to be installed. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at this. Anyway, what's your first impression? You don't want to hang this on a bumpy wall, right? So when we go to the wall, we have work to do. If you hang that beautiful product on this, you're going to see this through the product. To it. I'll be applying the skim coat with a roller and before I put the roller into the compound I want to wet the roller. If I don't wet the roller the roller will unduly dry out the compound and it won't roll well. Now my fibers on the roller are saturated. Look how well the compound sticks to the roller. And that's because we saturated the fibers. If it were dry, it would fall right off and there would be a lot of mixing and you would wind up wetting the roller by taking too much of the moisture out of the material. So you wanna wet your roller if you're going to be doing it this way. See, it really doesn't fall off of the roller. Test your mixture. If it's too loose, you'll have a mess. If it's... too dry, you won't be able to make a mess. Somewhere in between.
Let's go to the wall. I'm protecting the trim. Getting dry plaster off of trim creates an unprofessional waste of time, to put it nicely. Also, if you have an A-frame ladder, not the best choice for elevation. A, a workbench, something higher than this, is ideal for working on a nine-foot wall. But if you're tall and you can get away with something small that you can keep moving around quickly instead of a clunky ladder, well, that's your best bet. This is residential on a commercial job. We would use our Werner ladder that's adjustable in height. I have a couple of them. And they're essentially benches. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Look at my consistency. Perfect. Now let's identify the tools we need to do this quickly. You'll need a work bucket with water, preferably warm water. Sponge. A skim knife, okay. I recently purchased the level five skim coating blades. And I, they come in a package that looks like a shotgun uh, something that would house a shotgun. And I have yet to try them out. That was my Christmas present to myself. We have a pool trowel. These radial edges are designed so you don't leave lap marks on your skim coat. If your plaster, for some reason, is failing to adhere to the wall, I keep a can of this handy. This is oil-based primer. This will seal anything, crayons, perfume, hairspray. You spray this on there and then you wait 15 minutes and your plaster will stick. And of course we have a, a Hawk, H-A-W-K. Okay, these are the tools. If I leave anything out, just ask me.
what I'm left with is a nearly completed, barely needed to be sanded surface over which I can hang my wall covering. But it's been five or six minutes since I applied this. And the color of it tells me that the environmental air needs to be, the it's too moist. And so we need ventilation so that we don't make this a two day project. Let's go over this technique. Number one, how wet should the compound be? Wetness makes the application easier. The easier it is on your muscles to move this around, the better off you'll be long term, able to recover and do the same thing in a day or two. The thickness with which the material is rolled on is essential. And I'm going to show you what's ideal, both in moisture and depth or millage. So the degree to which this thickness is after rolling it on is a very important factor. I'm going to take my finger. This is the edge and this is the center of it. That's how much of my finger comes out with compound. You don't want it like this. Too thin. Here's what happens. This starts to dry. Plus, it's a lot of muscle to work this in to make it flat. Okay? And you'll find that it's too flat to fill in everything on your wall. A lot of work. Okay? So I made it thin to show you not to do it like that. Now, we know that this is the ideal depth. That's a good enough amount. You see? I think you got the idea. Now, the technique of rolling this stuff is easy, right? You keep this Get a spray bottle, I forgot to tell you to get a spray bottle. You want to spritz this down so this does not dry up on the edges. If it starts drying up, you're going to get rocks in here. It's going to be a nightmare. Holding your trowel, you see this is a 14 inch trowel. It will afford you efficiency. Now look at the angle at which I'm holding it. I wish I could get this thing out of the way. Okay. I'm not holding it like this. That will take too much off. I'm holding that at a 45 degree angle. This is zero degrees. This is 90. It's about 45, give or take. 35 to 45 degrees. Let's do it. I start off of the compound because if I start on it, look what I do. You don't want that. I start off, I'm dragging it down. Look how smooth my first pass is. We're gonna do it again. And you see how we made that scrape mark there? I filled it in by changing the angle at which my trowel hits the wall. So in order to fill it in, I lowered the angle. I didn't increase the angle. I lowered the angle. That's the ideal angle right there. The more I pass with this, the lower the angle becomes. 
I need a higher angle because I want to get done today. I want to take this down quickly. So you'll notice that on the first pass, the angle is greater. Look, because I'm pushing and I want to spread that stuff. You guys do this technique when you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. You change the angle at which the knife spreads the peanut butter, believe it or not. Now that I'm getting nice and flat here, I change the angle. I lower it. Okay. Look at the result. Who can doubt that making this nice and flat is simply a function of the right pressure, the right moisture, and the right angle? So I went ahead and did the rest of the wall because the phone calls in between. And so, but I, I showed you how to do this. This is the result. I, I'm telling you right now, if you've never used a trowel before in your life, you're already skilled on how to use it. You can do this. It looks bumpy now, but what you're really seeing is just sheen differentials. Drying, wet. The skim is very close to the surface here. And it's very flat. Okay. If you're a pro, this is uh, probably, you would agree, the best it's going to come before it's sanded. You know, like, uh, it's, it's, it's very nice. But if you're not a pro, you can achieve this level of expertise in a very short amount of time if you just follow the mechanical rules on application. If you really want to be perfect, you want to do a very good job, you will put a second coat on. You're looking at the second coat, the darker area. This is the drying first coat, and you'll see that, although you can sand this out, most likely, you will, you'll render an imperfect, uh, see that can be sanded out. But sometimes it's easier, especially because it's damp, when you try to sand this, you gouge it. Just filling it in again eliminates the need to sand it.
Let me bring you up close. I take this excess and I move it over to another part of the wall.
Let me show you the beautiful product we're getting. If you've ever been ice skating and that machine comes out and clears the ice of the snow, this is the result. This is your finished coat. I'm not even going to sand this. I'm gonna wait till it dries and just drag my knife against it to knock off that. There's no need to, you'll make it rough if you sand it. This is so smooth, it doesn't need sanding. Trust me when I tell you. Now, when you get to the end, you see your perimeter, your pool trowel can't negotiate into that corner very well. Although I didn't do a bad job. So you take your taping knife, and you just go in there and fill in anything left on the last segment. I told you that I would not be sanding this and I'm not going to. And the reason is because I'm going to hang it and hang the wall covering. And if I sand it, I'll scratch it. And so, is my hope for you that you will master this skill so much so that when you consider sanding it you say you know what I might scuff it up the only thing you have to get rid of after this coat if you're that good with this with the blade is that when it dries and literally, it's one of these. You just do this. Because any tools might very well scratch this beautifully smooth surface. I really wish you could see it in person because the, the video doesn't do it justice. This is perfectly smooth. All you're seeing is color differences between here and there. But please... Please trust me, it's perfectly smooth. So the wall is finished prepping regarding making it nice and flat. And it is absolutely beautiful. Of course, I folded over my four by 12 drop cloth because it has received lots of Drippings, right? So, now we'll just wait till this turns white. I will prime this with a penetrating sealer and hang our product.